All right, so you know college is for you. You went through the application process. Now, you got options. So I know you're wondering, what do I do now? Don't worry, I got you. This video is gonna help you decide which college to go to and how to decide your major. What's going on sports business campers and welcome back to our college prep conversations presented by Body Armor. We are back helping you navigate this life-changing decision and getting your career started in sports. This topic is really important because now we're getting into the nitty gritty. Where are you going to spend the next few years of your life? Today, we have a very engaging conversation with our executive director, Patrick Stack and the Broom family. We're gonna walk you through the decision-making process of how to choose a college major, as well as deciding what college to go to. I wish I would've had this team on my side when I was going through the decision-making process of college, so I hope you enjoy this conversation. Be on the lookout for what are the pillars you need to help filter your options? You'll be making a decision on where to live for the next two to four years. It's all about you. Declaring your major isn't a permanent decision. There are so many options to explore. Patrick Stack, uh, Executive Director, Co-Founder of Sports Biz Camps. I'm happy to be on the same team as Christian Murray. Happy to be on the same text chain as Phil Broom. Ha happy to have uh, Gavin Broom on here. Gavin is like the trailblazer for Sports Biz Camps. Dude comes to camp in 2019. Dude works for camp in 2019. Comes back in 2020. Meets some folks from Ohio University. And now he's going to OU. So he, he's, he's the trailblazer. He's the Clyde Drexler uh, uh, of, of our organization. Um, so that's my background. And I think as it pertains to kind of this conversation, apart from that, I've been a college professor for the last seven years. Prior to that, I was a college student, first generation college student. My mom didn't go to college at all. She went right into, uh, from right, right high school into, into working as a secretary. And then my dad, um, went through a little bit of college kind of, uh, ebb and flow. So I, I remember this, this really challenging period of like, what do I do after high school? Not so fondly. <laughs> But I'm excited to be a part of the conversation knowing that that was a long time ago when I had hair and no mustache. <laughs> I'm Gavin Broom, just recently uh, graduated from East Mecklenburg High School in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I'm going to attend Ohio University in the fall. And I'd compare myself more to Damian Lillard as a trailblazer, not, uh, not Clyde Drexler. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I'm really excited to go to college this fall. And... Um, uh, express my how I came to my final decision during this panel. So I think we've reached a, a mile point in parenting um, that I was introduced as Gavin's dad. So, um, you know, that that's big for me. Um, <laughs> Which trailblazer are you? Huh? Which trailblazer are you? I mean, you really blazed the trail. Nah, I'm, I'm Bill okay. Walton, man. I'm, I retired <laughs> early. I like to have a, a very open view of the world and I'm always hurting. So there we go. <laughs> We're going to just start off with the video from YouTube University. I work with students through this college admissions process, both with test prep and in terms of consulting. It's from my own experience. I've gone to college twice. I went to Stanford and I also went to USC as a graduate student. And so I've made college decisions a couple of times myself. So that's where this video comes from. That's who I am. That's what I do. Uh, and that's why I'm talking about this. So my number one tip for people who are trying to choose the perfect college is to source other people. There was an article in the New York Times a little while back that basically was talking about how a lot of times high school students make a college decision based on their high school selves, right? Based on their high school sort of view of the world. And we don't necessarily take into consideration the factors that are most important. And as a result, we don't necessarily make the best decisions. And the conclusion that this article came to, which is my conclusion also, is that one of the best ways to come up with the best college for you is to source people who actually have experience. Because the truth is one, you've never been to college. Two, you've never graduated from college. And three, the biggest impact that college is going to have on your life is the impact while you're there, as well as the impact after you're there. And your current self isn't going to know how to make the best decisions for your future self. In the same way that someone who has gone through those experiences will be able to. 
what's awesome is we live in a digital age and in a digital age it's really easy to start up conversations with people about particular topics my favorite place to do it is quora and go ask questions or go read the answers to other questions that people have asked about the universities that you are eyeing or you got into and figure out what are their experiences like what did they go through why did they like is from people who you might know maybe <laughs> friends of your parents and if you've applied for a very specific program, sometimes you can even reach out to the school and ask if they have any alumni who might be willing to talk to you about the program or current students. So reach out and try to get as many of those points of views as possible. Source the hive mind. But my number two thing that I'm going to say to you guys is actually the reason why you need to source other people. And my number two reason is that you need to set aside your individual teenage bias and think long term. I think those are some really points that we can build off. Essentially, we'll be the sourcer, Sports Biz Camp being the, the sourcer of um, the overall programming because um, for the most part, we're, we're going through people who have that experience. We're going through people who have been in similar situations. So honestly, Gavin, like you, you chose a high university. So can you walk us through why that was the right decision for you? It's a top sports marketing program in the country. So I, I, I couldn't give that up and the scholarship too. Uh, I got two of those, so I, I knew I needed to go to Ohio. Money talks. Yeah. Phil, what, what else do you think kind of helped sell it? And or like, what, what do you think? What do you think about the decision? I, I think that this, the relationship part played played a huge role in it. And it was the, the cost was definitely compared to some of the other schools that he was looking at. Um, definitely was reasonable and kind of in line with what we were willing to to pay for an, an education. And then also kind of the, it's far enough to be away from home, but it's not like too far. I mean, that's pretty much what it came down to. Yeah, so and actually maybe Gavin talk about that because she talked about that a little bit, like don't make a decision based on your high school self. Like you're going to Ohio. Like, have you ever lived in Ohio before? Nope. <laughs> years ago, did you think you'd ever want to live in Ohio? Nope. <laughs> so do you even know any other classmates going to school with you? No. So, you know, talk about them. And that's got to be, like, what's that like? Um, I, I'd like to say I'm a pretty independent person already. A lot of my friends who I talk to, they're like, I never live alone and stuff like that. I'm like, I, I love to be alone. Um, I spend a lot of time in my room just like, like either doing work, playing video games or something like that. So I feel like it won't be that big of a change for me. I, I just feel like I, uh, it's a place where I can strive and um, I feel like I could really strive at any location. So it doesn't really matter to me that uh, it's so far away from home. I give you credit, man, for pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. Like that's, you're going to make friends there. <laughs> you know, you're not going to be there alone. This isn't like this isn't like that Tom Hanks with Castaway. You're going to be like stuck in Ohio, no friends talking to a volleyball. Like you're going to be, you're going to have friends there, but you don't know anybody going there. That's like, that's scary. Not a lot of people make that kind of, it's kind of bold. They don't make that kind of decision. Yeah. I, I think that was one of my major, like I went to UNCC, as you can see, go Niners. Um, but I really wish I would have went kind of farther away looking back at it. You know what I mean? Um, but, you know, I just always, I never wanted to limit him as far as like, you could go wherever he wanted to and go, you know, we'd have to make certain decisions as a family if he decided to go too far. But um, I think that that Ohio was a good kind of happy medium to where, you know, he was far enough away where he can kind of spread his wings, but we don't have to worry about him, him wanting to come back like every weekend or anything like that. Yeah, and, and I, you know, I think like, once again, sounding self-serving, <laughs> but so, Full disclosure, I went to Ohio University. So, you know, I think when Gavin, when Gavin says it's the top, it's the top program in the country and whatever program you're looking at when they say that, he's not saying that like necessarily the students are the smartest or that like the professors are the smartest. What, what, what that's saying is like, you're that like there's the, the most alumni or the most successful alumni. So I think that's one way to look at college, the kind of advice I would give unsolicited for anybody is like, whose club do you want to join? Cause you're joining a club. And, and whatever that club is going to say about you, is it something positive or something negative? And in that case, he's talking about like the alumni that have come through that program are very successful. And now he's a part of that club and that's going to be helpful for him in his career. And that's going to be helpful for his brand because now he can put that club on his resume. So I, I don't know that a lot of people think about it that way, but that's what you're joining. You're joining a, a club or a community. Uh, one thing I also want to say about Gavin, as far as like this college and, and selecting Ohio is that 
he doesn't have any friends from high school that are going there. Um, and so one thing I always want to make clear with him is that like whatever school they go to, his friends, because most of his friends are going to college and going to, to universities and that's their journey, but this is his journey. So the two things, just because you're not going where your friends are going or whatever, that doesn't really have anything to do with you. You're going to meet new people. You know, you're going to start your career. It's all about you. It isn't about what they have going on. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess I feel I want you to hop on, on first is like, I guess coming from like the parent perspective, wh what is the college application process like? Like, what, I mean, you, you just kind of alluded to it, like seeing your son grow up and go through this process of like choosing colleges. Like that's a huge step for one, the parent and, and Gavin himself. So what was that? What was that process like? You know, like it's kind of whatever you put into it, you get out of it. I'm not really a really structured person, but it, it was like you just it's continuously like keeping up with deadlines and making sure that that Gavin's applying and, you know, checking his applications and making sure. But as much as that is, I tried to keep this as much hands off as possible. Like when it comes to raising Gavin, I like to have him make a lot of decisions on his own. I don't want to be like a helicopter parent and be too overbearing, you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, these are kind of his decisions. And, you know, I want to make sure that he's prepared for college to where, you know, when he gets there, he, you know, he's not out too much outside of his comfort zone and he's able to kind of handle things himself. Absolutely. And for me in particular, like, that's kind of how my process was. Like, for the most part, like, my, I would live with my grandmother growing up and so for whenever I was going to choose colleges it was like hands-free no one ever went through the process no one ever went through like FAFSA no one ever went through like how to choose a college like what filters are most important so I, I guess for for Gavin for you like what what things meant the most to you as you were looking for colleges and, and finding your home in the next step of your, your, of your journey? Firstly, I'd like to say, um, since they went to college uh, a long time ago, all this like new internet stuff was like still new to all of us at the same time, because I was the first person. Um, well, I'm the first son to, to go to college out of me and my brother. So um, it was really hard for us to find out where to look for certain stuff, like transcripts and a whole bunch of stuff like that. And it, what also made it harder was uh, my short in high school experience, too because they didn't even get to get to that part in my junior year before everything was shut down. When it comes to Gavin, like I said, I want him to be independent and we're always there to help him whenever need be. So like a lot of things where like the FAFSA and stuff like that, it's like, I want him to do his own thing, but I'm not just like completely just like figure it out yourself. You know, there are some things that he can figure out himself, but he should come to us, but it definitely is a lot different process than, you know, when I was in school filling out, like you have like the common app and stuff like that. We were just filling out application by application by application. You know what I mean? Could you guys talk about the common app? Because that was news to me in this process because I'm old as well. Uh, like Gavin, Gavin, what is the common app? How did you find out about it? And then how, how great was it? Because it sounds like it was pretty awesome. So during school, they had us use um, College Board and College Board and Common App are kind of like connected a little bit. Um, and College Board is where you go for like all your test scores and stuff like that. Common App might have been the best thing ever invented, to be honest, because it's everything all in the same place. You write one essay and it automatically goes to every college that you apply to. You put in your activities, automatically goes to every college that um, you want it to. So honestly, it makes it so much easier than doing every application on each individual website. When he told me about it originally, I thought it was a scam. I'm yeah. like, no, there's no way. Like, where do you have to put your money in? Da 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 da. You know, um, but he's right. It did end up being like a great asset and it just helped streamline the whole process. What research did you do prior to like applying for the school? Because, like you said, when you're going through the process and you have to pay $50 here and $75 there, like, like you said, that can add up. So, like, what research did you do prior? to applying and then how did you like find out what school is worth paying that 50 to 75 dollars for to apply okay so first i found out what i wanted to do like what major i wanted to have and i looked up the top schools for that major and that's how i pretty much got a baseline of which schools i wanted to apply for and then i took some of the better schools in north carolina and i also added those to my list and schools that have like reputations in north carolina 
and uh, I had to make sure that they either fit my major or they had a major close to my major. So your approach was like, what do I want to do? What do I want to major in? Let's work back from that, which is a, which is a really good approach. Mm -hmm. And then what's in state? Yeah. A lot of it also for Gavin was like word of mouth and kind of where friends were going and stuff like that. And I don't think there weren't really, I don't know that there were any, there was any schools that necessarily Gavin said, I want to apply to this. And I was just like, no, nah, that doesn't really make sense for us as a family and for you as a student. He pretty much like everything that he looked at, there was a relevant reason or another of why he would be willing to, or would, would that be a good location or destination for him? Christian, I, I might ask you a question kind of along, along those lines, similar to what Phil was talking about. You know, the, the video talked about like, the first thing you should do is like find a source, like find someone. You know, so like before we let Gavin talk about that, like Christian, like you were evaluating college, you know, did, did you, who did you, did you have any sources or how did you go about that? And, and what, are, what are your thoughts there? For me in particular, um, we had a kind of a college advisor, but he was like a regular teacher and he was real adamant on going to college and basically creating a future for yourself through college because you know like all the the benefits that it has long term on just your overall perspective on life so um he kind of advocated for that and he took us on like college tours and um we, everybody was like we did like study for the sat and the act and classes and basically just prepared ourselves to go to college and that was nothing that he did like through the school or nothing that was just him being a good man and and basically just like i said just trying to create a better future for us um, being that he'd been to college and everything else. So that's kind of how I found out about Johnson & Wells. I mean, if it had not been for him, like, I probably would have just, like, just searched up. Like, I would, I probably would have went to the local college at, like, West Georgia if I had not known of Johnson & Wells and him just taking that initiative of, like, bringing us to the colleges and seeing that there's a lot more different surrounding. You can be in a whole different environment, but still get the college experience that you're looking for. Gavin, yeah, along those lines, and not, not to sound self-serving, because I know sports biz camps has, has played a role like in your your progression, at least I think I hope it has. Like apart from sports biz camps, did who else did you reach out to that could help you help influence or inform like what decisions you should be looking at? Were there coaches? Were there friends, parents? Like what was that approach? So I have a really close friend and his, uh, his mom is one of my teachers. So she kind of helped me with stuff. And um, other than that, like, I, I always ask friends, I was like, I think I should go here. What do you think about that? And I just asked my parents a lot. I was like, we have these uh, opportunities on the table. I think that we should take this one. Or uh, they tell me that we should take this one or something like that. Yeah. Was that helpful? Like, did that, was that influential for you? Yes, that was actually really helpful. Because sometimes they see something that I don't see, so. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's a cool thing, right, Phil? Like, I mean, for college, at least, I know there's a lot of different choices, but pretty much everyone can go somewhere. And then so many people have already gone that there's there's a lot of people to be a resource or provide a perspective for you, even if, it's, if you don't have that kind of relationship, even if they're not their teacher, they, they went to school at some point, they can provide some advice on that stuff. Yeah, I mean, to, to me personally, I'm also big on community college, especially here locally at, at CPCC. So that also, and I always would try to tell him like, listen, man, like if you are not sure what you want to do, or if there's a certain school that you want to go to that maybe you didn't get into this time around, if that's really where your heart's set on, then we should look at those opportunities too. So for Langston, my younger son, one of the parents on his baseball team, she was actually academic advisor at Providence High School and put together a whole packet of information um, about the college process and filling out the FAFSA and doing all that. And like, man, that was worth its weight in gold, honestly. It was very, it had deadlines and everything on there and just all types of resources. So her giving us that was like great. And then as far as like, I didn't really have any conversations or and I don't think that Gavin did either with any kind of academic advisors or anything at East Met. Um, and I don't know if that was because we really didn't seek out that information or like, you know, that, that meeting or whatever. So I, I, I want kids to be like really proactive and parents about meeting with those advisors. Gavin kind of already had an understanding about through sports biz camp and through relationships that we have um, about, you know, what options are out there for him. Um, and the fact that he 
under wants already knows what he wants to do is just like has him well ahead of the curve in my opinion i heard a good quote here i'm going to share this with you guys comparison is the thief of joy right which which yeah. basically means like if if you try to look at where everyone else is going or where you're in college the most important thing about college is what you make of it yeah you can go to harvard and not go to class and fail out and it's not going to help you right you can go anywhere you go it's what you make of it. it's how you utilize that investment in yourself of both time and money i think that's really important and, and I, that's why i liked you saying that because like no one else no one else is going to live gavin's life just gavin well and, and that's exactly what my whole thought process was it before because i didn't want him to go somewhere that i made him go to and then be sitting there the whole time with a lot of resentment or whatever in his mind you know um i mean gavin that's got to be scary like I don't know. Once again, you talked about it earlier, like it's kind of competitive, right? So is that, was that hard for you to focus on your swim lane or just be like, this is what the right college for me and not look at where everyone else is going or like have friends that get into schools that you can't get into? Um, sometimes it is mentally draining, uh, seeing people get into schools that you didn't get into or seeing people go to schools that you couldn't even dream of going to. But um, you just have to focus on uh, the right path for you. And at the end of the day, I'm, I'm going to this school for a reason. And they're not going into to that school for the same reason. They're going to school for forensic science. I have no interest in forensic science. So. Gavin, is that scary to, to think about a career path in high school? Like what you're going to do for your career and you're not even in college yet? Is that intimidating? Um, not me, because I kind of knew what I was going to do. But I know a lot of people who uh, pick a major that may not be right for them or they, uh, they're they not really too sure yet. So that that can be scary for them. Christian, can we pick on you along those lines? Like, why did you, what was your major and why did you pick it? Yeah, so mine was sports management. And coming into college, like, I didn't know nothing about sports. Like I said, I, I came up here because that was the only other option that I had <laughs> other than um, the local college, West Georgia a University. But for, for me, like, I, I really didn't know, like, what sports was. I knew growing up and playing sports that, it could have been really cool to be in sports, but I didn't know like what management was or like what sport management was. So Gavin is, like I said, much farther than I was, but I didn't know what the heck I wanted to do or how I was going to get there. But like I said, just going through it and on the other side now, I obviously have more insights what it is and would recommend it to anybody who wants to be in the sports industry. Can I, can I ask you a question, Pat? Yeah. So when you came to making your college choice, did you have, did you think anything about like being in debt and student loans and all that type of stuff? Uh, yeah. And I'm still, I still have student loans and I'm 37. I'm on the other side of the equation. I'm still paying stuff back. I was really fortunate. So, you know, neither of my parents had gone to college, but like it was very critical that I was going to college. Yeah. Um, so I was kind of modeling off of, my sister, I guess, to a certain extent was older, but like other friends, like their brothers or sisters, like I was like kind of watching other people and where they went to school and someone understanding finances. And then when we were making our decision, cost was a part of it, right? And and we knew that our family couldn't have paid, afford to pay the entire amount. And then a portion of it was going to be on me to figure out how to do that. Um, but that was like, I was fortunate. I had a conversation with my dad, like, like sat me down and talked about that. Like, hey, we've got this amount of money and this is where your sister went and it's that expensive. And here's how much that money is going to get her. <laughs> here's how much it could get you, but the decision's on you. But ultimately it, it's on, it's my responsibility to then have to pay that back or figure that type of stuff out. That was a conversation. It was like, it was like a consideration, right? The same way it was for you guys. Like you could go all these places, but like there's costs associated with those places. Yeah. yeah. I just, I think that our, at my generation as parents are for the first time been trying to make more, um, better better decisions about you know the cost of a degree versus you know of going in debt or whatever you know what i mean that wasn't really a conversation that i had with and and so like for my mom's generation my mom and my aunt both went to Tulane in new orleans and which is like ridiculously expensive now but they both said that they were able to kind of work their way like my aunt was saying that she worked in the summers to be able to afford her tuition in the fall and the spring. That's impossible now. You know what I mean? So now, and even like with this process with Gavin, it's like, Gavin, like if you really want to go to college and you don't really know what you want to do, then go to CPCC for a couple of years, you know, take care of that 
get your associates or whatever, you know, pay a fraction of the price of what you're going to go to for a four year college or a university and, and do it like that. And I think that my generation, because we've been saddled with so much college debt, um, is going to be the ones that our kids, we're going to be making better decisions for our kids regardless, regarding whether or not they should go to college and what colleges they need, they should go to. I think that's spot on. Like, I think the the cost of college has gone up, I think, 70% in the last 25 years. And then that that's like, that is what it is. But then it's like, well, if the value of the degree is up 70%, then that's kind of a wash, but that's not the case, right? So that means that like, Gavin won't make 70% more money when he gets a job than he would have 25 years ago. So the cost is going up, but the return or like the upside of it isn't going up. So that's an honest conversation you have to have, to have to have, right, Phil, which is, is this worth it? Are you going to be able to pay this back? And if you're a doctor, if you're going to certain professions, like, yeah, they make a ton of money and they can pay back all the schooling, but that might not necessarily be the case in, in sports management, for instance, where the salaries haven't gone up that much. So like you, you got to kind of weigh the cost benefit analysis of it. And I do think online college is a good option. I think community college is a good option. I think no college for a year is an option and save some money. But I, and I'm, I don't want to pick on Christian here, but he just graduated. I'm sure he has student loan payments so different than me. And then that type of stuff will, if college is supposed to help you move forward, that will hold you back um, mm -hmm. if you're not looking at college the right way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and to add on to that, I just feel like regardless of where you go, it, it's solely predicated on what you want out of it. Like you can go to, like you said, you can go to Harvard, or you can go to the top schools in the nation, but if you don't put in the work, if you don't like grind it out and meet as many people as you can, get the best experience that you can. Another thing too is like, it's not just about the school you're going to, it's about the experience that you get throughout your education. Because at the end of the day, people are gonna go through college just to get the degree. And that piece of paper is not gonna guarantee you a job, it's not gonna guarantee you no type of success in your future. So if, if you're going into college thinking that, okay, this is gonna um, get me to the next point, it will. But at the same time, while you're getting that experience, while you're getting, going through college and, and just educating yourself, you, you also have to have experiences that can attest to what you're going to, to, to school to begin with, whether you know what you wanna do or not. Like, I just feel like that was something that I had to figure out midway through is that it wasn't just about the education. It wasn't about where you're going. It's about the experience that you're, that you're making. And Gavin, you talked about scholarships being a big part of why you went to OU, right? I mean, like, this is like, like Gavin, like, this is a business decision, right? Going to college is a business decision, right? Like, what are they going to be like, not taking a charge is like a business decision from, from a big dude. Like, it was a yeah. business decision. You're thinking about this is going to cost me this much time and this much money. And what do I get for that investment? So mm -hmm. money, it's, it's a business means money. It is a money decision, whether it's direct or indirect, which is scary. <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure how much this is supposed to be about like my perspective versus Gavin's perspective. No, we want your perspective. But so my thought process with Gavin, since he was younger, it was like, listen, I'm trying to get him the best education <sighs> at the lowest amount possible because I've seen how student debt uh, can, has just, I don't want to say ruined our generation, but yeah, definitely no, it, it has a though, man. major roadblock to our long-term success in building wealth, right? And as he got closer to making this final decision, I realized that like, he's not going to be saddled with any student debt from this decision, regardless of where he went to school. We're blessed, like, that's that's okay. So therefore, my perspective had to change of, it kind of opened up more options. Cause at first it was kind of like, all right, like given his grades and everything, and Gavin does okay, you know, but he's not getting any full rides anywhere, right? So the first thing would be like, if you can get a full ride and like the lady said in the video, it's all about not falling victim to small or for short term, just like short term decisions or whatever. And it's looking at the, the big the big picture or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, like school, kind of high school is whatever. And, you know, nobody really likes it, but we got to get through because we got to see the bigger picture, right? So, you know, those small, it's short-term impulses. That's where I was looking for, impulses. So like avoiding those small impulses to see the bigger picture of like, I got four years in this place. I really need to bust my butt 
so I can go somewhere and get as many scholarships as possible to keep that debt as low as possible. Right. So once we kind of figured out, all right, like he's not going to get a full ride or whatever, then we started looking at like different options. All right. So then the next way to kind of keep the cost minimal would be to go to in state. So he looked at in state schools. He got into, he applied to ECU. He got into ECU. He applied to App State. He didn't get into App State. He went, took a tour at ECU. And we started looking at like, would being that he wants to get into sports marketing, would ECU be beneficiary for that? You know, would the value be there or, you know what I mean, of going to ECU and paying less money versus going out of state, maybe getting a little bit better education and having better resources and relationships and going there. So we kind of made the decision of like, all right, this is going to be worth it for us and for him as a student and us as a family. And that's kind of where that decision was made. But I, I think that it just, if you don't have the ability to not have to worry if you have the ability to not have to worry about carrying a bunch of debt or whatever then i think that's the best thing to do is to try to find something that works for you for the least amount of money I, of I, would, I, I would agree i think like the it goes back to what we talked about like it's, it's an roi it's a return on investment conversation and if you if you've got two options one investment is four years of your life and two hundred thousand dollars the other investment is four years of your life and fifty thousand dollars, the ability for you to get return on that investment, meaning like make more than fifty thousand dollars or two hundred thousand dollars, is significantly easier at option A, only spending fifty k than it is with two hundred k. Now, either way, you got to like make that informed decision, and it's going to take time and investment and money and networking and all the things you need to get that money back. But your money back in fifty k is going to come quicker than two hundred k. So you've got to take that into conversation. And to your point, like sports analogy is like. When you get a fat contract, right? You get the you finally get your big contract in the NFL. Now you got a target on your back, right? Mm -hmm. After two years, you're like, yeah, you're good, but are you worth fifty million dollars? No, they cut you. So I think it's it's about making sure that you are utilizing that investment, and then on the front end, you can't get that money back. So if you decide to spend the two hundred grand, like you're in for two hundred grand, and you're going to be paying that down for the next thirty years of your life. Fifty grand, maybe you're out in two years, and you're done with that, and now you can start to save towards a house or a car or something like that. But it's an ROI conversation. That's what you're saying, Phil. And I'm with you, man. It's, it's hard to justify $200,000 investment sometimes. Yeah. You can get $50,000. Yeah. Th thanks, Phil. Thanks, Gavin. Thanks, Christian, for uh, for leading us. Make sure you do your send challenges. So if you guys do your work during the, during the career exploration camp, watch this great content, you can accrue points, points towards rewards and prizes and scholarships. We're talking about money. Scholarships help a lot. And then the event is July 13th and 15th, and then July 20th and 22nd. All right, so there you have it. There are so many different opportunities to choose from. It can sometimes feel overwhelming. Let's break down my three takeaways to wrap up this video. Number one, filtering is key. Break it down to six pillars if it's hard. Location, size, experience, major, community, activity. Number two, it's all about you. You're creating your experience for the next two to four years, so it's no pressure. It's all about what you want for your career aspirations, your life goals, and what you want for your future. Number three, you don't have to know exactly what you want to do. Think of college as a baseline of what you want to study. Then you'll see that there's so many different opportunities. There's something for everyone. How many student athletes we got out here? We didn't even address the decision to play in college or not to play. In the next video, we jump right into that decision to play or not to play. I know some of y'all are going through that decision process right now. It was exceptionally hard for me. So join us on our next college prep conversation presented by Body Armor.